Okay, now we're in chapter 6. So chapter 6 deals with the law of cosines, law of sines, vectors. Pretty much that's it. Now, the law of sines and cosines are ways of figuring out the lengths of unknown sides of triangles given two sides in an angle or two angles in the side. And um, <clears throat> so these apply to all kinds of triangles. Um, they're really not useful for right triangles. You just use normal trigonometry for that. So in chapter four, we studied right triangle trigonometry. Now we're going to deal with oblique triangles. And oblique triangles are triangles that do not have a 90 degree angle. So, and you might say, well, aren't most triangles oblique? Well, most practical triangles for using in calculations like engineering physics are right triangles. So what we learned in chapter four is, is probably more applicable in the long run than law of sines and cosines are, even though it seems like it's going to be covering something that's more generally applicable. So the law of sines uh, deals with the lengths and the angles associated with a triangle. So what we typically do is we use capital letters to represent the angles. So this would be angle A, this would be angle C, this would be angle B, and then we label the opposite sides to the angles with the lowercase equivalent. So opposite angle B is side B, opposite angle A is side A, and opposite side angle C is side C. We also have this one additional dimension, which is the height of the triangle. So the height is you take, you go from one side, um, to the opposite angle and this line is perpendicular. So for this particular triangle there are four height, three heights depending upon which angle you use as a reference. So this one would be, that would probably be the height associated with this side. If I rotated this thing around, um, you know, I could have this horizontal. So the height associated with this angle goes from that angle to the opposite side and there's a right triangle here. And then this one, the height would be probably something like that. I'm just trying to draw lines that are perpendicular. So this this red line here would be perpendicular to the side B. So those are the heights. So this is, like I said, three heights. Typically you show the triangle with one of the sides being horizontal. In this case, side C. And as a consequence, you know, the horizontal side is the base of the triangle and the distance from the opposite angle to that side with a 90 degree angle here is the height. Notice when you, you draw your height line in, you create two right triangles. Here's one right triangle. Here's the other right triangle. Put those together and you get the original triangle. Now you can have a situation where the angle here A is is greater than 90 degrees and in that case if this is greater than 90 degrees these other two angles have to be less than 90 degrees and the height is not the distance you might think oh the heights from say here to there maybe you might think that's the height or you might think that's the height but what you have to do is you have to extend this horizontal side and then the distance from this horizontal extension of the the base is the height. So the base in this case is the length of side C. This would be the base. This would be the height. But the equation for area still applies. It's going to be one half the length of the base times the height as, as defined in this way. Another thing that we use in calculating the un, all the unknowns is that the sum of the three interior angles of a triangle is equals 180. So if we know two angles, then we know the third angle. 
Now, if we only know one angle, then the other two have to add up to 180, but that's um, typically if you're given two angles, it's easy to calculate the third angle. Now, you can't, if you're given three angles, that doesn't allow you to figure out any of the lengths because you can have similar triangles with the same angles, but the lengths would be, they would be different, but they would be proportional to each other. So if you doubled one length side, the other one would double to maintain the angle values. So there are a number of different cases as far as, um, you know, whether you're given two sides and an angle or two angles and a side. And some of these are called the ambiguous case where you're given two sides and an angle. If you're given two angles and the included uh, side, then there's only one solution. But if you're given two sides and an angle, sometimes there's one solution, sometimes there's two solutions. Actually, maybe even three solutions, two solutions. So we're going to go through these. And these are in your book. So in the case of a, an angle and two sides, if the length of the opposite side is less than the height, what happens is that this, this side cannot meet up with the extension of this third side. So this angle defines the direction of the third side, but we don't know where it actually ends. And if A is long enough, then it, this could be rotated down and you're going to have an intersection of the two. But if A is too short, then it's just going to kind of wiggle here. And so in that case, there are no solutions. And this is where A is acute, which means between zero and 90 degrees. Now, there's the case of a right triangle where the height of the triangle is the same as the length of the side opposite the given angle. And there's one solution to that. So these are all cases where you're given two sides at an angle, but not the angle between these two. And if you had two sides and the angle between them, you'd these things could go out forever. So that particular <coughs> arrangement is really not useful as far as figuring out what the triangle looks like. So now, if this side A is greater than the length of this height, which is the height is the distance from this horizontal line and the line that makes up this known length side. So the Third case here is that if A is greater than B, then there's only one solution. So if the, the length of the side opposite the given angle is greater than the length of the side adjacent to the angle, then there is one solution. And you can use the law of sines for that particular case without having to think too hard. It's just going to fall out. Now the other case is where this length A is less than the length B. In that case, you can have two solutions. So here, this length A is less than the length B. So one way is for the length A to go to the right of the height, and it's going to intersect here. Or you can swing it around and go to the left of the height. Then there you have two solutions. This is one triangle, and the other one is this triangle. Now, notice that this triangle has an angle this angle B would be between 90 and 180, whereas for this solution, A is going to be, um, this angle here is going to be less than 90. Under that condition, the, all of the angles are acute angles. In this case, one of them is obtuse. Now, if the angle A is not acute but is obtuse, there are two possibilities. One is that there are no solutions. So in this configuration, with A, the side opposite the angle, being shorter than the side adjacent to the angle, this thing just can swing, but it can't. It, it's not long enough to run into this second line. I can't even rotate it around here and get it to work out. And in that case, the angle, yeah, that, the angle would be exterior to the 
to the triangle anyway. So if this were to rotate this over here, then angle A would actually be this interior angle. And then the case where A is greater than B, then you have one solution. So the ambiguous case is this one right here, where you have an acute angle A and the length of the side opposite the angle is less than the length of the side adjacent to the angle. So you should kind of check that out before you do the solution to know whether you, you know, which situation you're going to have. Okay. Now the area of an oblique triangle is given by one half the BC times the sine of A. So if you know the angle and the two adjacent sides, any angle in the two adjacent sides, you can calculate the area of this um, oblique triangle. So we'll come back and do some problems, but first we're going to do a case where we want to find all the lengths and all the angles of this triangle. And if we look, what we'll do is we'll look at the values and go back to this menu of different types of solutions and see which one it fits under. So this is an acute angle and side A which is the one that's opposite is greater than side B and so that if we go back over to these choices it's going to be this situation. So angle A is acute less than 90 degrees. Side A is greater than side B so we only have one solution so we just kind of don't have to worry about too much. So you can see that I've got this um, side A length over the sine of A, side B over sine B. So you see I've got side angle A, side A. So I'm going to use this particular variety to get the sine of sine of B. So we just plug things in. So you have 8 divided by the sine of 36 degrees is equal to B, which is 5, divided by the sine of B. So if we sign, solve for the sine of B, it's going to be equal to, let me get my calculator out. And you got to make sure your calculator is in degrees in this case because we're dealing with triangles. Okay, so if, if we solve for B, sine of B, we can move this up to there. There it is. So what we do with the other terms is we move the 8 to the denominator on the right-hand side, and we move this sine of 36 degrees from the denominator on the left-hand side to the numerator on the right-hand side. And this is, you're going to use your calculator, because most likely these are not going to be angles that are on the unit circle, or with a 30-60-90 triangle, or 45-45-90. So we take 5 divided by 8 times the sine of 36 degrees, and so the sine of B is 0 0.3674, and B is the inverse sine of 0 0.3674. Now because this angle is acute, the, the other ones are going to be um, well, I was going to say they are cute too, but well, we run into a situation that you have to actually think about some of this a little more deeply than this. We'll, we'll do that. Okay, so the sine of 0.367 whatever is uh, 21.6 degrees. So actually, the the third angle in this case. We so what are the other angles? We have we found the the um, angle B. So what is C and D? Well, I mean it's C and D, but the length C of side C and the length uh, the sine of C. So um, we can use the sum of the angles A plus B plus C equals 180. A was 36 degrees. B was 21.6 degrees. So we take 180 and subtract 
36 and subtract 21.6 and we get a C equals 122.4 degrees. So if we wanted to just kind of sketch this right now, what we'd have is we have uh, two smaller angles and then a bigger angle. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of draw it like this, kind of like that. So let's say this one is 21.6. This is 36. This one is 122.4 degrees. This length A, so this A is um, 8. B is 5. And then this is going to be the question mark. What is small c? So you can still use the law of sines. <clears throat> so we, we could pick either a over the sine of a or b over the sine of b because we know both of those now. So let's just use a over the sine of a equals b over the sine s over c. So that's what we're trying to figure out here is what is the length of side C. So if you solve for the length of side C, you'll get A times the sine of C divided by the sine of A. And we would expect it to be more than 8 and more than 5 because this angle is much bigger than the other angles. So we get C is equal to A, which is 8 times the sine of 122.4 degrees divided by the sine of 36 degrees. So that's 8 times the sine of 122.4 divided by the sine of 36. And I get 11.49. And it is. So this is this would be 11.49. Okay. Okay, so next problem looks like this. One thing you'll notice is that this side C is much smaller than A. <clears throat> so it's probably going to be something kind of like this. This is side, this is angle A. So it should be slightly more than 100 degrees, <clears throat> slightly more than 90 degrees. So it looks almost like 90 degrees, but pretty close. It's length 125 here. <clears throat> Side C would be this one. And so this would be angle C. This would be angle B, and this would be side B. So... <clears throat> In this case, we have an obtuse angle, 100 degrees, and <clears throat> let's see what has to happen there. So A is obtuse, and A has to be greater than B. So A is the same side that uh, is opposite the angle that we know. <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at this problem. We have side A is 100 degree, or angle A is 100 degrees. We have side A is 125, and we have side C is 10. So let's kind of sketch what this might look like. So I'm going to make the long side this side. And, you know, because this is a obtuse angle, I'm going to draw it specifically like that. So that's side A. This is, that's angle A, this is side A. So this is equal to 100, and 100 degrees. And the length, side A is 125. And we could choose either one of these to be angle C and side C. So let's say this is 10. And so we have angle C here. So because we have, um, an angle and the corresponding side, and then another side, then we can find this angle. Once we have this angle, we can find the third angle. 
then once we have a third angle, we can calculate the third side. So we'll call this call this angle B and this side B. So it's just a matter of using the law of sines, and then the sum of the angles equals 180. Okay. So what we have is the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C. And what we're trying to do is figure out angle C. So if we solve for sine of C, we'll have the sine of A times the length C divided by A. Because we always have the ratio of the angle to the side. So this angle A has to go with this side A being the denominator. So we have the sine of 100 degrees times C, which is 10 units, divided by A, which is 125. So the sine of C, so let's make sure our calculator is in degrees. Take the sine of 100 times 10, divided by 125. And, uh, oh, yeah, okay. So the sine of angle C is 0 0.07878. So we find the angle C by taking the inverse sine. And we don't have to worry about thinking about this too much because this angle is 100 degrees. So the other two have to be um, acute angles. So this will fall out calculator-wise. Okay, so we take the inverse sine of that number, and I get, so the inverse sine of 0 0.07878, angle C is going to be 4.5 degrees. So let's write that in here. So this angle, 4.5 degrees, pretty small. So now you can find angle B because the sum of the interior angles in a triangle have to be equal to 180. So we have 180 minus A, which is 100, minus C, which is 4.5. So we get B is 75.5 degrees. These are all degrees. Okay, so that's this angle. Let's write that in there, 75.5 degrees. Now, you know, this should give us the smallest side because it has the smallest angle. This next one will give us an intermediate length, so it's going to be somewhere between 10 and 125. So, um, so we use the law of sines again, but we, we're interested in B now. So we can do the sine of A over a is equal to the sine of angle B over the length of B. So the only thing we don't know is length B. So if we solve for B, that goes up here. This stays where it is. This comes down. And you have to multiply by the length A. So we've got the sine of angle B, which is 75.5 degrees, divided by the sine of A, which is the sine of 100 degrees, times the length A, which is 125. So 75, sine of 75.5 divided by the sine of 100 times 125 is 122.9. And so that's a length. And I just checked and that's the correct answer. So just thinking about if there's any other problems I want to do here. Let me see what I've got. Then we've got lots of problems. Let's uh, let's figure out one of these ambiguous cases. So we'll make up a problem that 
is is under this kind of situation. So I'm going to pick an acute angle. So I'm going to say A is say 30 degrees and side A has to be between side so B has to be greater than A. So let's say B is equal to um, 10 and A is equal to 8. Oh, and also H has to be. Um, so how do you calculate H? Well, H, we've got this right triangle. So if we have the angle and we have the hypotenuse B, we should be able to figure out what H is. So let's think about it. The, um, the sine of A is going to be the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the length of the, so what we're trying to do here is solve for H. H equals B times the sine of A. So in our case, <clears throat> this will help me choose let me choose A so it fits this pattern, otherwise it's not going to work out. So we've got B, which is 10, times the sine of 30 degrees, and I get H equals 5. So 5 is less than 8, it's less than 10. So my choices here work out. And there are going to be two solutions, so why, why is that? Well, let's see what happens. <clears throat> so if we have um, A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B. And if we solve for the sine of B, move that up here. Keep that over on the right hand side, divided by A, multiply by the sine of A. <clears throat> so B is 10, A is 8, the sine of 30 degrees, so <clears throat> the sine of 30 is a half. So we have 10 over 8 times 1 half. That's 10 over 16, which is 5 over 8, 5 eighths, which is 0 0.625. OK. Now, because of the fact that B could be either, <coughs> well, let's see, in the first quadrant, if we just do the inverse sine of, of B, we'll get the inverse sine of 0.625 and you'll get 38.68 degrees and so if we want to find angle C so angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 <clears throat> so A is 30 degrees B we don't we do know B is 38.68 Eight degrees and C is going to be 180 minus 30 minus 36 point 38 point six eight so I get C is equal to 111.32 degrees okay now the other the other solution here is if I got my second quadrant solution. So the way I would do that is I would take this angle, 38.68, and I would use that as the reference angle. So my other solution for B would be, so instead of uh, B being 30, angle B being 38 point, it would be 180.68 minus 38.68, so that'd be 180.180, 180. I don't know how I got 180.68, yeah, it's going to be 180 minus 38.68, <clears throat> so I get 
0.32 degrees. So let's see if we can kind of sketch these things out, see what they look like. So I'm going to put this page in here. So we've got 30 degrees. It's about there. We have this horizontal situation. And this angle here is 30 degrees. So this this length is 10. So the other side is 8. So it might go something like that. Let's say it's something like that because they're close to each other. So if we go this way, that would be one solution. And the other solution would be where you go the other way, like that. So you'd have our first, our first solution was this solution. So this was angle B. And this was angle C. This is length C. This is length B. This is um, length A, 8. This is 8, and this is 8. So for our first case, we got angle B of 38.68 degrees. And if we figured out, we figured out angle C is 111. 0.32, and then we could use the law of science to find that length, which would be long. The other option. Okay, so that was the first solution. The um, second solution is that the sign has to be the same as the previous one, which was this 0.625. So if you think about it, there's two ways to think about it. One is uh, we have this angle, 38.5. 6, 8, and you can see it's symmetric around the positive y-axis, or we could calculate it by taking 180 and subtracting this angle, which is kind of like the reference angle. And so this number is going to be greater than 90 degrees, which is what happens here. Just getting my calculator out. So I have 180 minus 38.68. So that's 141.32 degrees. And if you take the sine of 141.32 degrees, you should get 0 0.625, which you do. So this this is still satisfied. So we know that angle a is 30 degrees. We know that angle B is 141.32 degrees. So angle C is going to be 180 minus 30 minus 141.32. And you get 8.68 degrees. That's this angle here, which is pretty small. And you can use the law of, uh, of sines to find the, um, the lengths as well. So we found all the angles. So then what you can do, so let's, let's write down everything we know right now. We know that, uh, we know that side A is 8. We know that side B is 10. We know that angle A is 30. So that angle B in the first solution is 38.68 degrees. And we know that angle C is 111.32. The second solution is A is equal to 8. A is equal to 8. B is equal to 10. Angle A is still 30 degrees. Angle B now is a big number. It's equal to 141.32 degrees, and angle C is equal to 8.68 degrees. So, with those things known, we can 
calculate C. So we could either use A or B. Sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C because we're trying to find side C. So if we solve for side C, what we'll do is move that up here and move this down and that up. So what you end up with is the sine of C divided by the sine of A times A. So I can I can apply that to both case, cases. So we'll call this case one and we'll call this case two. So for case one, C is equal to the sine of 111.32 degrees divided by the sine of 30 degrees times A, which is 8. And the second situation, number 2 here, we have the sine of 8.68 degrees divided by the sine of 30 degrees times 8. And what we should end up here with is a number greater than 10 because the biggest angle is C. So it should have the longest length. Here, this is the smallest angle, so it should have the smallest length. So if you take the sine of 111.32 divided by the sine of 30, you get um, 1. Something's wrong here. I got it in the mode. Yeah, I got it in degrees. Sine of a, oh, I got to multiply that by, I forgot to multiply that ratio by 8. And so I'll get 14.9, which makes sense. 8, 10, 14.9. Longest side goes to the largest angle. The second one, you have the sine of 8.68 divided by the sine of 30 times 8 again. And we get 2.41, and that's the smallest length. So the smallest angle is 8.7. The smallest length is 2.41. Okay, so that's that's just an example of how you could end up with uh, two solutions. Okay, and the last case is where the angle A is obtuse and A is too short. So if A is shorter than B, what's going to happen is this thing would swing around. It would, we, it would never cross this horizontal line associated with angle A. Now, if, if A is greater than B, then it would cross here and you'd have a complete triangle. So in this case, there are no solutions. So you know, part of the harp after going through the homework, I mean, one of the biggest problems, the hardest problem is figuring out whether you have zero solutions, one solution, or two solutions. Uh, you also have the second obtuse case, and that case where A, the length of A is greater than the length of B. And in that case, um, you have one solution. Now, all of these examples are this side side angle now if you had if you have two sides and the included angle then you have um, you have one solution it's this side side angle which is um, what's the word ambiguous Okay, we'll come back and do some more of these examples in a second. One of the applications of the law of sines is to find the uh, area of an oblique triangle. So, you know, oblique triangle is one which is not a right triangle or a, well, just not a right triangle. And, you know, the typical equation for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height and if you know but if you know two sides and an angle the included angle so that's the important thing here notice we have the sine of a and bc the sine of c ad so this angle is between these two sides if you have that situation then um, you can use this equation instead of having to 
set it up to figure out what's the choose one side as the base and then use uh, right triangle geometry to find the height it just saves you a step. So those are the equations for finding the area. Okay, and then the remainder of this um, section is just looking at uh, problems, word problems. So we just have to take the description of the problem, make it into a triangle, and then use the law of signs to solve the, what they're asking for. So in doing problem solving, these are the basic steps. First, you need to draw a figure, because if you don't have figure, you have no idea what the triangle might look like. You identify the given information on the figure. So just like in the other problems we were given the area um, not given the area but given the the names of the sides uh, then you can redraw it so what you do is you have figure with all the drawings which kind of represent what's physically happening then you can redraw the figure as a triangle without the additional information which is not necessary to solve the problem um, to do the actual math uh, then in that triangle you can identify the three sides arbitrarily however you decide to label them as a b and c and then the corresponding angles a b and c and then with that information okay so you then you assign the given information so you take the information off the other figure and then assign them to your triangle so let's just look at a couple examples here so because of prevailing winds a tree grew so that it would lean four degrees from the vertical at the point 35 meters from the tree the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 23 degrees find the height of the tree Okay, so let's draw this situation with the tree and everything else. So here's here's the ground. Then you have a tree just leaning. I'm going to just draw it as a trunk just because it's easier. Then it says if you draw a line, a vertical line, that the tree has an angle of 4 degrees. And then it says at a point 35 meters from the tree, and that would be the base of the tree, because that's what you can measure. So this is 35 meters. The angle of elevation to the top of the tree. So we're going to draw a straight line here from 35 meters to the top of the tree. They're saying that this angle is 23 degrees. And the question is, what is the height of the tree? So the height of the tree is is this thing right there. That's H. Is that true? Or is it the, the height? I guess the height of the tree is not it would be the it would be this length. So this this length would be the height of the tree. Okay, so that's the, that's the drawing. That's the original drawing. Now we're going to make a triangle up that looks kind of like what we just did here. So we get 23 degrees. We got really, it's almost vertical, so it's slightly leaning this way. And then we've got the ground. Now, this angle is 23 degrees this length is 35 and uh, and this angle this angle is 4 degrees so this angle is going to be 86 degrees the, the angle that's interior to this triangle that I've drawn is 86 degrees and we can call these this is a this is uh, we'll call this side this is angle a which is opposite side a doesn't matter which one we call B, this is angle B, so we'll call this side B. This is angle C, this is side C. So now we've set it up and it fits everything required. I should have probably, according to the, the steps, I should have um, labeled them A, B, C, and D, A, B, and C first and then put the numbers in. But 
So what we can say is that uh, angle B is 86 degrees, angle C is equal to 23 degrees, um, and side A is equal to 35 meters. Now because we have a side and two angles, there's no ambiguity to the situation. All we have to do is we can, well, first thing we can do is we can we can find angle A here. Well, I already, I've got A shown here. So um, the measure of angle A is going to be equal to 180 minus the other two angles. So you get 180 minus B, which is 86, minus C, which is 23. So that is 180 minus 86 minus 23, that's 71 degrees. So that gives me that. Um, actually, I don't need to know that to solve the problem. What I'm really looking for is side C. That's the height of the tree. So we can choose, we'll use A because, um, actually we do need to find this angle because I need to match that up with my known length. So actually we did need that. So if we solve for C, we'll get um, the sine of C divided by the sine of A times A. And so C, the length, is the sine of angle C, which is 71 degrees. Actually, C is 23 degrees. So we get the sine of... 23 degrees divided by the sine of A, which is A is 71 degrees times A, which is 35. Sine of 23 divided by the sine of 71 times 35, we get 14.5 meters. Now, if they did, if they defined the height as this distance, then um, what we could do there is we have 86 degrees and we have C. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say H here. We'll call this H. That's what they're really looking for. So we could say we we'll use the sine because opposite over hypotenuse is a sine. So we get the sine of 86 degrees is equal to H over C, opposite over hypotenuse, and if you solve for H, you get H is equal to C times the sine of 86 degrees. C is 14.5 meters, sine of 86 degrees. So we get 14.4 meters. It's not a whole lot different because this angle is close to 86 degrees. I mean close to 90 degrees anyway. Okay, moving on to the next problem. So we have a 10 meter telephone pole casts a 17 meter shadow directly down a slope where the angle of elevation of the sun is 42 degrees. Find theta, the angle of the elevation of the ground. So let's see what we can do here. So we've got some kind of slope. And then we have a telephone pole. And let's just move this down a little bit. And then what you'd have is the sun somewhere up, up here. Now the angle of elevation of the sun is relative to the horizontal. So what we'd have is a horizontal line like this. And then if we draw a line from the sun Let's take it from the bottom of the sun through there. And what's going to happen is this shadow is going to continue to go 
until it intersects with the ground. That's what creates the shadow. So what they're saying is first this distance, the height of the telephone pole, is 10 meters and it casts a 17 meter shadow down the hill like that when the angle of elevation of the Sun is 42 degrees so this is 42 degrees and what they're asking for is what is the angle of elevation of the ground actually that's not the angle we're looking for we're actually looking for so if we draw a horizontal line here one of these has to be not level that one must not be level okay so there's the uh, angle of elevation of the Sun so that's 42 degrees and the question is what is this angle theta so what we can see is that if we can find if we can find this angle or actually if we could find Yeah, so you kind of have to do a little trigonometry here, I mean a little geometry. So, you know, if this, if we could take this over here, this angle is 42 degrees. Because you've got, no, actually this is not 42 degrees. Um, the sum of these two. So the, these two angles here, that has to be 42 degrees. So if you could find this little green angle, then you could subtract that from 42 and you'd get theta. So that's where the 42 comes in, ultimately. Also, you've got this right triangle. So this is a right triangle. The telephone pole is going to be going vertically. And um, so if this is 42 degrees and this is 90, this one has to be 50 48 degrees. So this angle is 48 degrees. So now that we've got all that set up, what we need to do is to create a figure that is just a problem that we can solve using the law of sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as one side of the triangle, this as the other side of the triangle, and this one is the third side. So have something like that and what we know is this angle here is 48 degrees we know this length is 10 we know that um, this length is 17 and if we can find this angle then we can subtract it from 42 to find the angle of elevation so let's call this angle A, call this side A, call this side B. So this is angle B. Finally, this is C. So this is side C. And what we want to do is we want to find, you know, what is angle B. And then we can do that to find the elevation, which is going to be lower than 42 degrees. Okay. So we have this this angle, this side, so we can use this side to find this angle. So we're going to use the law of sines, which says the sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. We know everything except the angle B, so we can solve for the sine of that angle. That's going to be the sine of angle A. So again, we're going to try to solve for this. All we have to do is move this to the numerator. And this one's in the denominator. So we have the sine of A over A. Multiply both sides by B to get solve for the sine of B. So let's figure out what the sine of B is, and then we can take the inverse, inverse sine to find B. So the sine of what we have is the sine of uh, 48 degrees 
times 17, actually times b, which is uh, 10, divided by side a, which is 17. So the sine of 48 times 10 divided by 17 so you get 0.437 b is equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.437 and they get 25.9 degrees now that's not the actual angle of elevation uh, theta is equal to 42. So theta is equal to 42 minus 25.9. So that's 16.1 degrees. So let me pause it, check the answer. Okay, so that was correct. Next problem. A plane flies 500 kilometers with a bearing of 316 degrees from Naples to Elgin. The plane then flies 720 kilometers from Elgin to Kent. Find the bearing of the flight. Uh, there is a drawing that comes with this. It's in the book, so let me just draw this thing. So it turns out that Canton and Naples are directly east or west. So this is Elgin. This is, I just realized I've already done this problem in the homework. So we'll not do that one. Just, we'll just finish there. Okay, so that's it.